Hello all and welcome to this hands-on lab. In our lab today, we will learn how to enable an AWS local zone, create a subnet for our local zone, and then launch resources in our local zone subnet. So let's get started. Before continuing further ahead, a couple of things to keep in mind. AWS services used in this lab can incur charges. Hence, ensure that you clean up all resources after completing this lab. Prerequisites for this lab is knowledge of AWS local zones. Hence, if you do not know what this service is all about, please refer to this overview tutorial that I had created some time back. URL to the tutorial is mentioned here right at the bottom. I will also have this URL posted in the description of this video. These are some reference URLs. Again, I would recommend that you actually visit these URLs, especially the first one. I have it opened and we will be using the first one in this uh, lab as well, because the first one talks about what kind of infrastructure you can provision in different local zones. But these URLs do have additional information on this topic. So do visit them. Again, I will have them posted in the description of this video. In fact, let me just go to that particular, the first one. So AWS local zone features. And if you come scroll down, you will see that for each local zone, it basically talks about the different types of resources that are supported by that local zone. What kind of instance types, for example, for EC2 are supported, what kind of EBS volumes are supported. So depending upon the local zone you are planning to work with, come back and refer to this particular URL. And yes, the types of EC2 instances, the type of EB, uh, EBS volumes keeps on changing. They do keep on updating. Mostly I've seen that newer types are being added. So do come back over here and refer if the type that you are trying to provision is supported or not. If not, go for one of the types of resources that is mentioned on this particular page. So let me go back. So scenario for our lab today, we need to enable an AWS local zone. Then we need to create a local zone subnet. And then finally, we will launch resources in that particular local zone subnet. Step one is to enable a local zone. So we will go to our EC2 dashboard, then click on enable additional zones. Now over here, I have mentioned about NYC. Now you can use any local zone that you like. Then we will basically select that particular local zone for New York City, go to actions, manage zone group, Check enable, click on update, then type enable, and then finally click on enable zone group. Now, after you have completed all of these steps, it takes a while to show that zone enable. Okay, so after you've completed all the steps, it will give you a message on the top that you're successfully enabled, uh, you know, zone group, et cetera. But if you scroll down, it will still show you as disabled. So it takes a while to show it enable. So let me go back over here. This is my AWS console. I'm an EC2 dashboard and all of my zones are enlisted here. Let us go ahead and click on enable additional zones. And remember, I want to enable New York City. So I'm looking for New York City. So right here, NYC, so I've selected that. So US East 1, NYC 1A. We go to actions and then click on manage zone group. So we have completed these three steps. We check enable, click on update, and then type enable and go ahead. So we check enable, click on update. Again, we will have to type enable over here and then click on enable zone group. Now, if I scroll up, it will tell me successfully updated zone group. So my six, my request was 
successfully executed. Now I'm going to close this and basically refresh the zones. But when I come down and again I go to NYC, oh, now showing enable. Okay, that's fast. But if it is not showing enable for whatsoever reason, okay, do not get alarmed. Sometimes it takes a while for it to be shown as enabled. As long as you got that message on the top, you should be good to go ahead and work with that particular local zone. So we have basically completed step one. Step two is to create a VPC. So let me go here, go to VPC. Okay, still coming up. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a VPC. We are going to select VPC only. I'm going to use this name. You can give whatever name that you like. This is my CIDR block 5PV4. Keep all the other settings as default and then click on create VPC. So click on create VPC. Select VPC only. Now it's going to be my local zone VPC. Now you can give any name that you like. Then I'm going to give my cider block slash 16. Let all the other settings remain as default and click on create VPC. So our VPC has been created successfully. Okay, so I've completed this step. Let's go to step number three. So now we will create a local zone subnet. So we will go to subnets. Over here, click on create subnet. Select your VPC. Again, remember whatever name that you gave up on the top. I'm going to say my local zone subnet. And in availability zones, over here, remember that you have to select New York City, right? So you basically give your, uh, select your VPC and then give your subnet. But over here, for availability zone, select the local zone that you just enabled. I enabled NYC. If you've enabled NYC, you're good. But if you've enabled some other, you know, local zone, which is closer to you, ensure that you select that particular local zone, okay? So I think I selected my VPC, my CIDR, subnet name. I selected my availability zone. This is my VPC CIDR, and I'm going to give my subnet CIDR over here and scroll down. Everything looks good. So I've selected NYC and click on create subnet. So my subnet has been created successfully. So we've completed this step. Now we will create a resource in our local zone subnet. So let's go back to EC2. Now we are, remember in uh, our, we want, to, we want to basically create these resources in our NYC local zone subnet. Right, so that's our intention. Now, this particular URL, if I scroll down, or let me just simply search for New York right there. The type of EC2 instances that this one supports is T3, C5D, R, R5D, and G4DN. The EBS volume that this particular local zone supports is GP2. So keep that in mind. And these are the different types of resources, right, from uh, ALB to ECS to EKS to VPC and Direct Connect. So keep that in mind. So we should try and launch a T3 instance with the volume type as GP2. Now, if you are using some other uh, local zone, you know, not NYC, then go over there, scroll, for example, Phoenix, you can see it has 
It actually supports far more. It supports GP3, it supports IO1, ST1, SC1. So go over there and check what kind of infrastructure does that particular local zone support. Okay. But going back to New York. So we are here. We are going to click on launch instance. Now we go to launch instance. We give instance name. We select our AMI. I'm going to select P3 medium. I'm going to change some configurations. I'm going to uh, use 10 GB bytes. Remember that it's supposed T3 with GP2. So I'm going to make those changes. I'm going to create a security group. If you want, you can give port 20 to open so that you can SSH into your instance. Leave all the other settings as default and then click on launch instance. Now, for whatsoever reason, if this thing fails, the only reason and it will fail is because that particular configuration is not supported by your local zone. And if it fails, and it will actually tell you that, hey, this particular configuration is not supported, then go back to this particular URL that I had shared, and I will also have it posted in the description of this video, and check as to what type of infrastructure is supported by your local zone. Okay, so let's go back, I think. Click on launch instance. Okay, so I'm going to say my uh, local zone EC2. I'm going to select uh, Amazon Linux. And this is good. Instance type. Now, instance type is going to be T3. So let's go to T3, I'm gonna select T3 medium. Okay, you can select whatever key pair that you have. And remember to change the VPC to your VPC. So my local zone VPC, this is our subnet. And that should be my, your, my local zone subnet, which essentially as you see over here is US East one NYC1A. So this is awesome. Uh, you create a new security group and I'm going to say my SG local zone. Okay, come down or my local zone. SG is better. Okay, and paste it right there. Okay, SSH22 is open from anywhere. Okay, I'm going to change this to 10 because it's a bigger instance type. And remember that this one supports GP2. Okay, GP2. So we will change this to GP2. Now, let me make this a little bigger because this is a bigger instance. Okay, yeah, okay. So let me make it 15 GP2. And I think everything else is good. And we have most of our settings in place right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on launch instance. Okay, so our instance was launched successfully. And it is coming up. Right, so we have basically completed this step. If you want, you can go ahead and connect to your instance using PuTTY. Now, what I am going to do is, I'm going to show you the error that I was talking about, right? So this will take some time, it's a bigger instance, but let me replicate that error because if you get that error, you should know what is happening, right? So let's say uh, EC2, I'm gonna call it EC2 error. Now we are going to select Amazon Linux and then this particular type. Now let's say I'm going to select T2 micro. Uh, you know that T2 micro is not a supported instance type. Okay, it's only T3. You see T3, no other T's are over here. So we are going to select T2 micro. We are going to select an AWS key pair. We are going to now change this to my local zone VPC, our subnet. 
we have an existing security group. So I'm going to select that particular security group. And over here, I'm just going to keep it G3. Again, this is, see again, GP3 volumes are not supported with local zones. Choose a difference. So it's actually telling you. So I'm going to change this to GP2. Let me see if it gave me an error message that T2 micro is not supported. No, it did not. Okay, so let's go further ahead. So T2 micro 8 is fine, GP2, and everything else is good. So now let me go ahead and click on launch instance. Now, this ideally should give me an error. There it is. And the reason why it is giving me this error, if you see that the requested configuration is currently not supported, please check documentation for supported configurations. Again, if you come back over here, you will see that T2 is not supported. Now, it was intelligent enough to identify that GP3 is not supported, but it was not intelligent enough to tell me that T2 is not supported. But if I had changed that to, let's say, T3 or C5D or any of the instances that I mentioned over here, then that instance initiation and launch would have gone successfully. So if you get this error message, go back and check your configuration and also check the configuration that is supported by that particular local zone. As long as that configuration is supported, your instance will launch successfully. So if you see this instance, uh, the one that is running right now, it is up running, two by two checks have passed and we are good to go. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and connect to your instance, just like how you would typically connect to any of your EC2 instances. So I hope that this lab was helpful. Do practice this lab. This is an awesome feature. Post your comments. And this is it from me today. I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.